Hello, Clovis Elementary families, and welcome to our first ever virtual back to school night. I'd like to extend a special hello to any families that might be new to Clovis Elementary, and we'll begin by introducing our administrative team. My name is Donnell Kellum, and it is my honor and privilege to serve as the principal at Clovis Elementary. This is my second year as a Jaguar. It has been amazing so far. I continue to oversee staff, student safety, curriculum implementation, and the general functions of our school. I'd like to also introduce you to Mrs. Ashley Spenhoff. She is a GIS or vice principal at our school. She also oversees staff, student safety, she is also the first level of contact for discipline and behavior incidents, and she oversees our school site council, or SSC. Mrs. Paula Vivid is also a GIS or vice principal on our campus. She oversees staff and student safety in special education programs at both Clovis Elementary and Bud Rank Elementary. Ms. C. Tao is our resource teacher. Ms. Tao works as our ACES coordinator. She provides support, resources, and assessments for English learner students and teachers. In addition, she is our English Learner Advisory Committee Chairperson. That's also known as our ELAC. Support staff on campus include Jeremy Grundeman. He is our school psychologist. In addition to Taylor Reeves, who works as our with our transitions team as an action coach. Many of you has, have expressed concerns about our special education services. If your child is on a 504 plan or has an individual education plan, an IEP, we will continue to provide supports and services that benefit their education. The list of individuals on this page are all part of our special education team who are working diligently to make sure that that happens. Mrs. Avoyan, Mrs. Sharnick, and Mrs. Penaloza are our speech pathologists. Mrs. Van Vanuelos and Mrs. Pearson are our RSP teachers. Mrs. Trujillo, Ms. Ruiz, Mrs. Lott, and Ms. Miller are our SDC teachers. Tamara Berry, Mrs. Berry will be our 504 coordinator. Ms. Cruz is our student study team coordinator and Jeremy Grundeman is our school psychologist. These individuals will be reaching out with you to connect and just talk about supports and what distance learning might look for your child. In addition, if you have questions or concerns and these names are familiar, you've worked with them in the past, feel free to reach out to them. You can also work directly with your child's classroom teacher. Thank you all for your participation and your engagement this summer as we made decisions about reopening school. You received multiple surveys and also participated in an online re-enrollment process. All of those things were vital in helping us move forward. When you completed the online re-enrollment, you had an option of what you would like for your child if and when we return to on-site instruction. If you chose the online option, you were sent an additional survey and given the option between scheduled virtual or flexible online. At this point, we are moving forward with a school with scheduled virtual since we cannot offer on-site face-to-face instruction. If you chose the flexible online option and your child is in transitional kindergarten through fifth grade, your student will be interacting with a curriculum called Accelerated Education. They will be assigned to one of our teachers as their case manager and you will be contacted. If your student is in sixth grade and you chose Flexible Online, they will be participating in Edgenuity. Again, they will be assigned to one of our staff members, one of our credentialed teachers that will help facilitate that learning process. As we move through this challenging time and uncertain time, we will continue to keep you updated on where Fresno County falls on the watch list. As you likely know, Governor Newsom's order includes restrictions on counties that are on the watch list and offering on-site instruction. We will need to be off that watch list as a county for 14 consecutive days in order to return to campus. Again, we will keep you posted on when that will occur. This year, Clovis Unified is celebrating its diamond anniversary, 60 years as a unified school district. Our motto this year is clarity, 
quality, and commitment. I wanted to highlight a few key points that Clovis Elementary has planned that relate to this motto. In terms of clarity, we are committed to increasing communication through the use of an app called Blooms. This is free to parents and provides two-way communication between yourself and your child's teacher. We are excited to offer this as it also includes scheduling features which will be important in our welcome week process. Quality. We have highly qualified teachers utilizing district adopted curriculum and resources that your student will access through Clever. Commitment. As a site, we are committed to simplicity and consistency through limited school-wide platforms. We will use Google Classroom and Zoom. We will also make a master list of all teachers' links available on our school website. As parents, we want you to access as few things as possible if you have multiple students on our campus. I'd like to explain what our daily bell schedules look like. This first slide shows what our AM kindergarten students will be experiencing every day of the week, Monday through Friday. You will see that there are two instructional blocks made up of 90 minutes. 90 minutes is a long time. Please rest assured that during your child's classroom teacher's presentation, they will illustrate and break down these 90 minutes so you will get a clearer picture of what the instructional, instructional blocks will entail. We do not anticipate students zooming or spending 90 minutes at a time looking at a screen. For kindergarten, we are continuing with our AM PM model which means during instructional block one, there will be two credentialed teachers assigned to your child's class to help with additional support. During an instructional block two, your child will work on mathematics. This schedule is for our transitional kindergartners and our PM kindergartners. Their day, Monday through Friday, will begin at 10.30. They will work on math first, and after their break at 12.30, they will move on to English language arts, again with the help of a partner teacher. First through sixth grades, you can see their schedule for Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Our school day begins at 8 a.m. However, this time is mostly set aside for teacher meetings. Your child might have the opportunity to participate in an intervention or a co-curricular activity. Our school day will officially begin with instruction at 9 a.m. This is the first point in the day where attendance will be taken. This instructional block one includes opening activities and English language arts. Again, your child's classroom teacher will include additional details on how these 90 minutes will be broken down. After a 15 minute break at 1030, students will move on to instructional block two and work on mathematics. A 45 minute lunch break will take place at 1215 and students will end the day with a 60 minute block from one to two that will include ELA, social studies, science, and closing activities. We are continuing with early release on Wednesdays for first through sixth grade. Our first attendance block will still begin at 9 a.m. That block will last for 60 minutes for opening activities and English language arts. After a 15 minute break, there will be a 60 minute block for math. And after a 45 minute break for lunch, there will be a 60 minute block for ELA continued, social studies, science, and closing activities. While school will close at one o'clock, students will be expected to work on independent assignments from one to two, an additional 60 minutes. How can we encourage your child being successful with this schedule? Some ideas include creating a designated workspace for your child or children in your home. Help them make sure that supplies and materials are readily available. We will be providing basic supplies during our welcome week. If you need anything else, please ask. You might want to help your child by setting an alarm to go off five minutes before each instructional block occurs. 
This will help them ensure that they have all of their materials and they are ready to log in on time. Use headphones when more than one student is using audio. Again, if you need some, please ask. Attendance will be vital during our distance learning. Again, we acknowledge that this looks much different than the spring. At this time, we are being held accountable by Senate Bill 98, which requires elementary teachers to take attendance during the first academic block. For academic blocks two and three, teachers will be required to enter information into Q or the student and class participation module. Regular school attendance is important to your child's progress. While we are distance learning, it is important that you continue to report absences as if we were on site. Absences can be cleared by calling in or visiting the school's website. All absences must be cleared within 24 hours after the occurrence. Positive behavior during distance learning is going to be vital, just as it is when students are on campus. We understand that doing schoolwork from home comes with its own challenges, and we want to make sure that all students are behaving in a way that supports one another and helps create a positive atmosphere in their virtual classroom. We've come up with an acronym with the word PROWL. Jaguars are on the prowl for excellence during distance learning. The P stands for perseverance. Our students are encouraged not to give up when something is challenging to ask for questions when they need help or clarification. And if at first you don't succeed, to try again. R is for respect. Mute your microphone while others are speaking. That's referring to Zoom. Use kind words. Wait your turn to speak or contribute. We want our Jaguars to be on task. They should log in on time with their video and student name. They should be present and actively engaged and have their organized materials ready to go. Jaguars should follow instructions the first time they are given. We want our students to be working hard to finish their assignments on time, pay attention to instructions and details, and set daily goals. The goal is for all of our Jaguars to be learning, to learn something new every day, and to listen to the opinions and perspe perspectives of others. Failure to demonstrate personal responsibility will result in a PRA check. We are going to continue with our school-wide positive behavior reinforcement system called PRA. PRA checks again will be given when person, personal responsibility is not demonstrated. That could be behavior, for example. That could be tardies. Upon the fifth PRA check within a quarter, the student is no longer eligible for our incentive. Our incentive for positive behavior during the first quarter of this school year is going to be a Clovis Elementary Jaguars t-shirt. Our meal system has shifted once again. Rather than weekly meal boxes being distributed once per week, meals are being moved to mornings daily before school. This will begin August 17th. You will be able to go to a drive through between 6.30 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. at several different locations. You will notice that Clovis Elementary is not currently listed as a site for an elementary school. Luckily, we have Clovis High right next door where meals will be served. You may also choose to some, to choose, excuse me, you may also choose to visit additional schools that are nearby like Clark Sierra Vista, or Weldon. Free and reduced price meals, of course, will be offered through this program. If you think you might qualify, you can check our CUSD school website by visiting cusd.com. Under departments, choose campus catering and then click no cost meals. Laptops, hotspots, and materials, oh my, all of those things are going to be crucial as we move forward. During the week of August 17th through 21st, we will be making sure every student has what they need to be successful. If your child needs a computer or hotspot, you should have indicated that during the re-enrollment process. You can still log in and make changes if needed. Appointments will be scheduled through Bloom's or your child's teacher. You and or your student will have approximately 30 minutes to visit their classroom, 
pick up textbooks and materials, and ask questions. Technology pickup will take place out of the library's south doors. Please pick these items up before going to your classroom. Parents must be present to sign the technology contract. This is a sample schedule of what our week will look like during the first week of school. Our day will still begin at 8 a.m. and teachers will be having students engage in, to, in some preparation and orientation activities. The rest of the day from 9 to 3 will be dedicated to individual appointments. We will be using the Blooms app to schedule these and it will be important that if you have multiple students on our campus that you make sure they are scheduled in succession. If you have technology to pick up from the library, you need to do that first. For example, if your appointment time is scheduled for Monday at 9.30, you should arrive in the library to pick up your materials no later than 9.15. That way, when you report to your child's classroom, they will help you make sure the laptop is ready to go. If you are not picking up technology, we encourage you to choose a time slot later in the week on Wednesday or Thursday. Please note that face coverings will be required for all staff and all visitors. Social distancing guidelines and staying six feet apart will be enforced for all staff and all visitors. Please reschedule your appointment if you or your child are running a fever or experiencing any other symptoms such as headache, congestion, runny nose, etc. Students are expected to be in dress code whenever they are on campus. Technology help is going to be a big issue, especially as we get everything up and running the first couple of weeks of school. Of course, you are always welcome to reach out to your child's teacher or call the school for help. There are some great resources online through our district website. If you visit cusd.com, click students. Under student resources, there is a choice called technology help for students. There are several avenues to access help for your child as it relates to technology. Athletics, I know, is a big concern, especially for our fourth, fifth, and sixth grade students. At this time, fall and winter sports are currently on hold based on guidelines that have been sent out by the CIF. When we return to school, we will attempt a modified or shortened season for all sports in the spring. We want to make sure that all of our students athletes have every opportunity available to them as they would if we were in school. What that means is, for example, if we return to school in January, we would probably start with football season. We would offer our fall sports, football, volleyball, cross country. That season may only last a couple of weeks so that we can transition into what would have been our winter sports. Again, athletics are on hold at this time. ACES, our after school program, is also joining our virtual world. Students can still enroll and participate in ACES. They will be registered to an ACES staff member who can support them in academics, fitness, and social and emotional well being. If you would like to register for ACES, please use the link on our school website. Enrollment will be accepted August 10th through August 28th. Co curricular opportunities are a huge part of what we give to students here at Clovis Elementary and in Clovis Unified School District. While distance learning certainly creates a challenge and our top priority is planning meaningful classroom learning activities, we still want to make sure students have opportunities to stay engaged in co-curriculars. Stay tuned for details regarding student council, GATE, and ECL. Block C is currently on hold. Fourth, fifth, and sixth grade teachers are working together on this and will provide updates. Again, at this time, our top priority is providing quality instruction during the school day and teachers are planning for that. Our music programs are vital. We will still be integrating music into our curriculum. This includes classroom music for grades one through four, as well as band, choir, and orchestra for fifth and sixth grades. Ms. Braswell, Mrs. Harris, and Mrs. Vanderpart are our music instructors, and they will be sending out additional details soon. Grades will continue to be reported as they were prior to distance learning in the spring. Transitional kindergarten, kindergarten, 
First and second grade students will continue to be evaluated on their mastery of grade level standards and will receive a standards-based report card. Third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade students will earn letter grades. Dress code is important to help our students focus and provide consistency. Students should be on dress code during Zoom. In addition, the dress code will be in place when students participate in textbook and technology pickup during Welcome Week or any other time that they are on campus for school-related activities. We understand the challenges that distance learning has created, especially in terms of the social and emotional well-being of our students. Our school psychologist, Mr. Jeremy Grundeman, has developed a website that is very useful. There's a direct link from our homepage. It includes books, videos, activities, and several resources for talking to your child about COVID-19. As a school, we will again be using Positivity Project, where students will study 24 character strengths that build positive relationships, empathy, and a mindset that other people matter. You can see a snapshot that shows the different character strengths that will be studied during the first half of the year. Second step is an additional curriculum that will be used as a tier two intervention. It's a holistic approach to building supportive communities for every child through social emotional learning. Thank you to those of you who were able to submit questions and concerns through a forum last week. Hopefully this information is helpful. Again, your child's classroom teacher has prepared more details to what the daily schedule will look like and different things your child will be accessing through distance learning. If you have additional questions about what school will look like when we return to face-to-face -face instruction, there are several great resources, including our reopening plan on our district website. I encourage you to regularly check our school website, clovislm.cusd.com, for updates and additional information. Thank you so much for your support, your patience, and your flexibility. We are genuinely excited about the 2020-21 school year. Go Jags!